<sighs> what time is it? Oh my god. Today's HHP day. What's up people? We are wheels up, finally, on our way to HHP High Horse Performance here in Smyrna, Delaware. I'm about 20 minutes away. Just want to warn you in advance, the GPS is on, so she's going to be interrupting this conversation. We're going to make it quick. Uh, anyway, those of you that have been following me for a while know that our Trackhawk has been at High Horse Performance for over a month for a complete engine build. Those of you that are brand new don't know that, so I'm going to explain why and what is going on. About six months ago, Elena and I decided that we needed to switch the exhaust. This is what it all started with, a conversation about exhaust. She didn't like the Borla cat back, neither did I. It wasn't the same as the uh, same sound as the axle back. I was okay, I was content with it. Um, she really hated it though. And we had this conversation about getting something a little deeper. <laughs> That's what she said, right? <laughs> oh, she's gonna kill me for that one. Anyway, uh, this is how the conversation started. And then about a month into, after I talked to the shop about doing an exhaust swap, um, we had this little issue where at wide open throttle, vehicle would shutter just a little bit, like it was starved for fuel. Couldn't figure it out. No engine lights, no codes. Um, she ran normal, idle, everything was good, except for at wide open throttle. So we thought it was uh, bad fuel. Then we thought maybe it was like spark blowout, bad spark plug, or spark plugs were dirty. Here, it turns out it was this. There's pieces. The inside of my motor was starting to grenade. Found that once they started tearing down my motor. Anyway, uh, before we discovered that, back it up, pull, pull back a little bit. The exhaust was the first thing that we decided to do. Then I been talking to Josh for about a year now about doing some more efficiency. Uh, what can we do with the track hawk to make it more efficient? One thing led to the next, and then my buddy Stang Mode blew up his 2020 Mustang GT motor, scared the crap out of me, and I decided, all right, I need to bulletproof this block and this engine as much as possible. What can we do to make it as strong as possible, even if we stayed at the current horsepower levels? 750 pump wheel, 812 wheel for race gas. I wasn't even concerned about horsepower as much as I was concerned about strengthening the motor for longevity. That's the dead on truth. I was not concerned about going faster. I was more concerned about uh, longevity and strengthening. So next thing you know, we're into a full on short block. And that's a block internals, manly pistons and rods, ported heads, Cook's headers, uh, green cat, cats, aka high flow cats into the AWE uh, ex touring exhaust, 10% lower pulley, uh, a Metco 275 and 310 upper crank pinning kit. Uh, our snout was sent out to Joker Performance to be ported and polished. Oh, uh, and a new intake by Legmaker because I had just switched um, hoods. I got a carbon fiber hood from Black Ops. A buddy was selling it. Bought it from him. It has a vent that's like right over where the JLT was that I had. I was concerned about rainwater getting in. My concerns were really just worrying too much because after putting the hood on and driving in some torrential rain and having it washed, the rainwater was very minimal. And plus, the JLT has a rain cover. But anyway, I swapped out the intake for the leg maker intake. Somebody is going to ask, what are you doing with your other JLT? Uh, it's already been claimed along with the Litton's pulley. My exhaust was already given away. So I don't really have anything left to give out or, or give to anybody. Sorry. So now we have a leg maker with a rain cover and a carbon fiber snout tube. That'll kind of... Um, 
help accent the engine bay with the carbon fiber hood. And that's where we're at. And I am about 15 minutes away from the shop. So let's get on over here, see how far along Josh is, and see where we are in our tuning session. Boy, there she is. All right, I'm gonna get set up here, here, and uh, back with you in a sec. These are all aluminum, so you just don't want to over tighten it. Okay. Yeah, what you want to do is you just want to get them unloose a little bit. Just get them. They're not going to be super tight to begin with. Just crack them all. Just when the belt's on it. Okay. Do one at a time. Remember off the top of your head, what side now it is? Almost like taking off a tire. No, I don't. 316. 316th. There you go. 316th. Okay. Then there's going to be two sets of washers on these. Make okay. sure all of them have the uh, two sets on there. Okay. You know what the front one is? The cover one? Gracie does. <laughs> what do you want? What's the front? The, the front set screw for the. Four millimeter? Four millimeter for the dust cover. Mm -hmm. We don't have one. Getting a 15 millimeter closed wrench yeah. okay. is a lot easier. Or if you have enough room on this, you can just get a longer ratchet. With oh, all you're doing is pulling it over. That's yeah, it. Yeah, just a tensioner a little bit. Just to get the belt off. Mm -hmm. Okay. Then you don't tighten too much. How are these green belts? How do they hold up? Good. Yeah, you'll, you'll see it. It'll, if, once it starts yellowing and losing its color, yeah, you know, maybe after a year or so, you may want to throw a fresh belt on there. It'll really do change out. I guess around June, I'll call you guys up to uh, set up an appointment for a visit. So and all this is just this, and then it just goes on either way. Well, I mean, it can go on. It doesn't have to be set like a different, any special way. On okay. The you just want to feed these on. Get them all started before you tighten them up all the way, because if not, that last one, you're going to strip it out or you'll never get it on one of the two. 
So just get them all, almost like put on a tire. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Of course, this one doesn't want to go on that well. Don't force it. Just find which find the hole that it works best in. Yep. Exactly. Is this a, a eight rib belt? Here's a ten rib. Yeah, a ten rib. Wow. Hmm. Then once you get them all started, then we can tighten them up a decent amount, and then uh, after you get the belt on, you can tighten up the rest of the way. Once there's some torque on the belt, on the pulley itself. As you go from one, tighten it all up, tighten it all up, tighten it all up. These last one or two, you'll never get them on, and the hub will be off center. So keep it loose, just literally like putting on lug nuts. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yep. And you, and you snug them tight the same way, opposite corners? Yep, yep, star pattern. Just get them nice and snug on there. and Almost like finger tight? Yeah, yeah. Then we can put the belt on, then we can crank them down. But you don't want to do them too tight. You don't want to really want to put Loctite on these because you'll never get them off again. Then with the belt, you just want to make sure if, if it does drop, you can see down there that it's around the balancer and stuff. Right. So just, you always want to check that. It's a lot harder to check it on a Hellcat because you can't see it with the track box. There's so much room in there. You can just make sure. You want to make sure it's just on this and then on the uh, tensioner itself. Okay. And then just bring it right over and put the 15 on. Make sure it's on the ribs. Check it again and then should be good to go. And then I'm going to give it a nice little snug. <laughs> Did you squirt them? Check it out. Did it work? Did it work? Alright. Or someone use that. And then the when you have the cap, you're, the cap is going to go on with a the little small allen that's going to go right in there. And then okay. it's good. Outstanding. They have one of the things over there, but yeah, that's all you gotta do, and just make sure it's tight enough, but you don't wanna crank on it. Ready to be fired? Hold on, yeah, I'm just gonna make <laughs> going over them one more time. Unless you want to, then I'll lose my hands. <laughs> check the bottom. Not what did you say? Oh, yeah, I checked the bottom, it's good. Okay. Yep. It's that's on. it. That's it, yeah. Then you can see on the belt that it's on the balancer on this side, too. So you can see down there and. Okay. Make sure that the belt's on the balancer and stuff like that. Oh yeah, I could see it from here too yeah. that it's inside that little lip. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you want it right inside that lip, but not too far in or it's uh, off from the back side. So basically when you put it over, you put it back softly so you're not really moving yeah, yeah, anything yeah, out of the yeah, way. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Outstanding. Exactly. All right, that's Josh, it. Alright, so a little update. Um, I don't want to lose the daylight and then not be able to finish this video. So where we're at right now is 761 horsepower on pump gas, which is a nice bump from where we were. Uh, currently, we did our first hit for the MS-109 and it's at 816. So it's only going to improve over the next two more pulls and then we're going to call it quits. So on the uh, pump gas, Josh asked me if uh, I wanted to max it out or if I wanted to play it safe. So I wanted to play it safe. The last time we were here, we were around 16, 17 PSI. We decided to keep it at 15 PSI uh, just for safety, reliability. I mean, nothing's ever 100% guaranteed or reliable, but I wanted to have a little bit of safety room. So I didn't push it all the way. I didn't say, yeah, max it out or, or just totally send it. Same thing's gonna apply on the race gas. Now he's getting ready to, uh, He's already made the second adjustment, about to start the car up here in a second, and do the second pull on the MS-109, and we should see a nice little bump again, but we're, I'm not gonna set full send. I'm not gonna full send 
I want to have a little room for, you know, uh, error. Because I know what happened last year, and I don't know if this has happened with other people, when it got really, really cold out, it gets into the teens, sometimes close to zero around here, or up in the northeast, it, we were having an overboost issue. I tell you, these things love cold temperatures. Uh, it's about 50 degrees out right now, so we're going to anticipate that, or hopefully that won't happen again. But yeah, so that's where we're at right now. But even when it gets dark and we're driving home, I'm going to have the lights on and talk about the first, uh, the first drive, etc. So still here at High Horse Performance, as you can see, almost everybody else is gone. Uh, it's at dusk. We're losing the light, but we still have two more pulls to make. Smell that that uh, MS109. Holy shit! Wow. All right, second pull on race gas is done. 850 wheel horsepower. That is a huge jump considering the last time we were here with just the upper pulley, we were at 812, so now we're at 850. One more, uh, I think that was at 17 degrees, he said, so he's gonna throw a little bit more timing at it. Uh, he said it was running a little rich, he's gonna lean it out, nice curve. Uh, one more pull to see what we get, so I'm guessing, I'll say 860, uh, 865 maybe. We'll see, we'll see here in a second. But so far, second pull, it's at 850. All right, here we go, final pull. All right. We'll see where we go from here, but as soon as we're done, we're gonna wrap it up. I gotta get after it. Wow. <laughs> Just sounds wicked. All right, final final pull. Let's say uh, 860. That'll be good. That'll be 100 horsepower over what we got on pump gas. So hopefully you can hear me. I don't know how well this audio is going to turn out, but here we go. Let's see what we got. Whew. All right. Get away from the correct. Way in 
a second. No way. Wow. There it is. Yeah, that's a hell of an improvement. Holy shit. That's it. All right. 877. What? <laughs> oh my God. All right. Wow, the lights are bright, so. All right. 877 horsepower. That's incredible. It's over six. It's over 65 horsepower gain from the last time we were here, and uh, just an incredible bump from pump gas. So, and we'll be, we'll be uh, playing with some MS109 quite frequently. But got to reconnect the front shaft, put the transfer case motor back on, uh, swap the pulley, do the tune. And then I gotta get on the road, I gotta get gas and head on my way back to Philadelphia. So that's all I got for now. Do me a favor before you go, hit that like button, hit the little bell notification right next to it. If you have any questions, shoot me a message below. HHB's information is all in the description of this video. That's all I got. I'm out.